super strong. Yeah, so you know, it's it's such a lovely feeling. And I'm not saying this because she's here. She's one of the few actors who inspires confidence in the viewer. Okay, kuch so bahut close hai. There is something very substantial about this film. Thanks a lot. Thank Divya, you. Thank you. Thank you. Next to Divya is Naomi Dutta. You know, it's such a delight to have her as a panelist because I have known her ever since she started out as a reporter for a television channel who used to come to my office probably once a week, probably once a week to interview me. So me interviewing her, I am interviewing her today, gives me immense joy. Let me tell you, she has graduated from being a reporter and a reporter who knew her area of work very, very well. She is now a writer. She has written The Fabulous Lives of Bollywood Wives, season 1 and season 2. She has also done a show on Hansika Murwani, actress Hansika Murwani's marriage. And of course, she is busy writing a couple of more uh, four ODT platforms, which she refuses to divulge at the moment because she says, let it come as a surprise. And right in front of me is Madhur Mandarkar. What do I see in his introduction? Except that he's a five time national award winner of wow. Padma Shri, who has made such brilliant films as Chandni Bhan, Fashion, Heroine, Page 3. And from these names, of course, besides that, he's made a, a lot more films. But from these four or five films, you would have realized how much importance he gives to women characters. He's made women centric films. In fact, he was one of the first makers of women centric cinema when women centric cinema in the film industry used to be a forever word. People used to say, Ye film hai nahi hai. He made such films and made successes out of them. So, a big hand for my esteemed panelists. Let me begin, Madhur. <coughs> You know, you're a producer, director, writer. What gave you the confidence that India or the Indian public is prepared for women-oriented subjects? Because before that, I think 15 or 20 years before, or, or, I mean in the late 90s, it was almost unthinkable to make women-centric films. What gave you that confidence that this is one genre, this is one kind of cinema which needs to be tapped? Uh, good evening everybody, the lovely audiences and thanks to the Nanda for inviting me with the great Tattas over here. Tattas. And Mohamed Tattas. Two Tattas are there with me. So absolutely great, very esteemed panelists. So very happy over here to be with them. And Kumal, uh, your first question about K. Uh, it's been 22 years since my journey began with the uh, success of Chandni Bar to India Lockdown and also Bubble Bouncer, Heroi, uh, Hindu Sarkar, all this movie, women centric cinema. It's very difficult today also, it's not that easy. Yeah, it is now because of the OGT and because of the state digital cinema, a little uh, more comfortable things are there in movie. Otherwise, the whole game is like, and when I made Chandi Bar, I made it in one and a half rupees, and that was the budget. I told once to be opening a couple. It was the costume budget of heroine of Pony of Karina <laughs> dress. So, uh, you know, so I feel it is still difficult for to make women's cinema. And there was a the time when I went Chandi Bar, Pastry, Corporate, Fashion, all this movie. So people say, no, Madhuri made it, 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 Madhuri made it. It became your brand of cinema. Absolutely. And it was very difficult because they said Madhuri knows to Navigate, navigate the budget and how to control it, and that is the problem over here. People think, are you making a male movie, a fashion movie, are you making a big picture, so you make a male star, you make a female movie, you make a pastry, you make a male star, you make a female movie. But I think in our society, in, in our country, you know, lots of issues and lots of topics are there where we feel it should necessarily very vital to have a point of view of a woman. And that's what I have definitely 22 years gained expertise in it. And I'm very happy I'm successful uh, with the national award, with the commercial success. And people, whenever I meet in mall, airports, 
Karamai for the Taker. People do say, Madhuri, are you please continue with the kind of cinema you make? So I am very happy, content with the kind of cinema I make. And I feel in our country, like I there's a lot of issue and uh, topic which, from a woman point of view, has to be true. Fantastic, lovely. Uh, Divyanji, uh, where Madhuri makes that kind of cinema, I think you pick and choose your roles, uh, your roles depending on how substantive the character is. Uh, am I right? And secondly, has it now become a rule that such roles come your way because people, producers and directors know that they have to do something and do something. Is it so? First of all, a very good evening everyone. And it's so amazing to see such an amazing audience out here celebrating women with none other than Komalata. And thank you so much for all the fabulous words you spoke. You deserve really every word of it. <laughs> Um, well, I think uh, roles, um, when I started off, in fact, he's, uh, he, he knows about it, um, when he was casting for Heroin, and there was this fabulous role uh, for me. And of he, PR. Uh, yeah. Of PR. And he and I were like very sure that, you know, we should do that role. But there were a lot of people who said, oh, she's very sweet for his and she, she looks at his and how much he could do this kind of role. Um, he actually had a point to prove when he uh, said Chandra look badalte hai, just made me change the entire thing. And though he and I knew it's not about the face, it's not about your body types, it is about the attitude that you walk with. And um, I think he and I kind of got together to prove that and that, that role for me became very, very memorable. And thank you for having that faith. Uske baad mujhe, wo halka sa grey shade karna bohat achha lagta tha because I had been doing those very nice roles. So I think uh, my journey has been to uh, not be cast in a certain image. Typecast is not being a child. So I always like to break that. And that's my only journey. Uh, work touch wood has always been uh, nice, but uh, the fact is that um, you should see a different image of yourself when you're looking into the mirror. And that should say, hey, listen, I'm very excited. And when you're excited, so is your audience. So uh, that matters that there is a little nervousness in your stomach because there is butterflies there which So yes, I think I started from there and now um, it rolls out into me and I'm very grateful for that. Phenomenal, phenomenal. For somebody who has no godfather in this industry, imagine getting, having roles written for one <laughs> yeah. is, is a fabulous uh, thing. Uh, can you imagine in this cinema, me, four actresses, or three actresses, who are approaching 50, and they are the lead players. It's unthinkable. But Naomi made the unthinkable, doable. <laughs> she did it, and she tasted success like what? We're talking about the fabulous lives of Bollywood wives, you know. Naomi, what gave you the confidence to debut with such a series? Didn't you develop cold feet? Ke? middle-aged women, I can't do, first team women centric and then that also approaching 50. Firstly, Koval, I just want to say that I'm just so happy to meet you after so many years. Yes. Because, uh, when I was, so am I. When I was a top reporter, I remember I used to come to you for everything. I didn't understand anything and I would be like, Koval, please tell me what was occupancy, what was the commission order. And he would explain everything to me. And thanks to him, I used to work on the business channel and interview but it was three yeah, yeah. times for that. <laughs> Page three also. Yeah. Really, that says a lot about your understanding and your intelligence. I could explain anything, but you picked it up so fast. So, but I need to be much more of you, right? Very good thing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, coming to the Fabulous Lives of Modern Guys, firstly, it's, it's a reality show, or actually, what we like to call it, it's a docu soap. So, it's about real life people playing themselves. So, actually, you have to stick very true to their lives, you know. So it's like how you are keeping up with the Kardashians, you know? it's the first sort of first attempt in that genre. You know, I think what has happened to an OTT has been a game changer. It's been a huge game changer. So when you go to an OTT platform, they don't ask you ki women centric hai, ya male centric hai, ya whatever hai. As long as it has strong characters. Having said that, even then, they will tell you these skew should be towards you, it should be Gen Z, it should be millennials. But I think with this show, we, we showed that there are four women who are pushing 50 and they can have a life, they can have ambitions, they can have desires, they can have 
which is beyond uh, uh, beyond just being but you know at a certain age people are just supposed to fail away. Like after 40 you know you're, you're like no longer supposed to exist. You know? <laughs> yeah, you're not supposed to, you're like you're just supposed to fail away. Nobody's supposed to look at you, you're supposed to be whatever. But at least with this, uh, we showed with two seasons the kind of popularity the show has had, that people are interested. It's okay if they're pushing 50, it's okay if they're discussing things like menopause and stuff like that. But we are doing it. And I, I have to credit um, OTT platforms for that because that's been a huge game changer. Of course, people like Kalkun have already said that they've made and given us great films. The girls are great films. But I feel I think they would also agree that you know OTT is coming in has to change the game quite a bit. Ninja, thank you. So quick to respond. See, OTT definitely from last two, three years has a search in uh, like I said. Uh, the kind of budget I want to make a public answer. Uh, if I would have gone to a regular producer to make a film, that wouldn't, they wouldn't give me that desirable budget which I wanted. But the OTD gave me a good budget to get that opulence, to get that bigness. Because hot star brief of this with me, okay, Madhu think you're making a film only, but the OTD went with a lot of grandeur, a lot of, uh, you know, we should not do like a... Don't cut corners, don't cut corners. Don't cut corners, absolutely. Like, you know what, we want to have a good budget to it. So I'm very happy that uh, OTD has come. But the same thing, if I go to a regular producer, wants to be a movie, so it would be three fourths of the budget, but I want to watch that. Okay, I'm not going to figure that, it's still that. So it's very difficult for us to make, because since I have a trail of making cinema with the movie, so my image of my narrative has been like that. Otherwise, it's very difficult, because a lot of people tell you, Like, oh wow, she's, she's amazing. But that, that wasn't sold on Samantha. 
I'm talking about people behind the scenes, like an Elmi Dabla. It once upon a time it was difficult. You couldn't imagine a woman in command. There were hardly any women directors. Today you have more of them. Similarly, writers. You have a Juhi Chakravarti, you have a Naomi Dabla. Tell me, to break into this uh, writing arena, does being a female come in the way? So, well, sometimes what happens is that's the clear and sometimes people come to you and say, I want a woman's perspective on this, or write something which is from the softer side or, or the feminine side, or whatever. Like, I'm supposed to do a documentary on serial heroes. And, yeah, after a point, I didn't get to do it. I was like, I'll do it. This is just not so hard. There's more in their heads being chopped about us.
they also feel that you know, it's time for us also to do where we get the potential to not only doing like item numbers or just to be around with the actor in, in the film, like singing, dancing and all, but to show the talent, true talent. So there are lots of other filmmakers also who are making and audience are really uh, uh, liking it. But the again problem will come over all, it's the budget has to be there. The thing is what, what will get for a big star this budget, when you moment to say, even if the actress is a big star, I'm just telling you, still the budget has to be cut over there. Even the half the budget is there. Okay, the actor is good, big, and big, and big, but then the budget is not going to be an actor. And that is because the film of the business has not been at that level. Yes, it has not been at that level. And they will see that the actors have seen the audience in the mindset. So, it's not the opening level, it's not the opening level. People should go to watch that movie. Technically, I was like, I said, hey, Karina Kapoor in 2012 got a weekend of 23 crores. It was huge that time. It was very important that the kind of hype you create, the kind of want to watch the movie, it is very essential. Then only the thing is done. But now we are saying OTT is there. OTT is definitely here. There are filmmakers, writers who are getting different concepts, different kind of ideas. We are making an actual host. Actors, I know for me, I am telling you from the time of Chandni Bar, all the film, all the actors are kind of prizes. I am being very honest with you. Penka Chukla, Karina, Kangana, Vipasha, Ravina, everybody. They do the budget because suit the budget of the film. Because I have to make a movie also. I have to show. So this is their way of showing that they are ready to take those first few steps so that this becomes where, as Divya said, why should we be discussing whether this is a woman-centric film or a male-centric film? Let it be discussed as a will. So this is their own little contribution in trying to get there. Absolutely, to get there and then positioning to it. And then it becomes that the other problem is what? Well, whenever you cast woman-centric cinema, I mean, there might be the basic reflex for the actor's film. Lot of actors have problems with them. प्रोड्यूसर क्या होता है यार अच्छी एक्टर्स के लिए नहीं अच्छा हीरो लेने का ठीक पाते हैं अभी एक अच्छा एक्टर के बजाय यार अगर मैं ये करूँ वाले तो पिक्चर जिसकी यार तो मैं क्या करूँ यार तो मेरा नाम कुछ नहीं है ज़्यादा नहीं दे वो लोग इट इस इट इस अ कॉम्प्लीट देर आल्सो तो देन यू हैव नहीं चलेगी या आठ नहीं चलेगी यू नो दैट काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स 
Tell me, I want to know your perspective. Budgets can never be a constraint on OTT. In the sense, whether it's a male subject or a female subject. It's, it, it depends like... Uh, oh, so, approval it depends completely on the story. Then it depends completely on the story and the scale that you want to give. It's never a question of... Uh, you know, it's never a question of who's the star cast who. Because obviously, if you get bigger stars, the budgets go up. But it's usually based on the story in the short form of the, of the thing. But right now, let me tell you, everybody is rationalizing. All budgets are being slashed. The, <laughs> yeah, big time. Yes. The honeymoon period is gone. <laughs> yeah. So now everybody is back to a day, but how much are you spending on this? Let's cut one car from here, let's do this. All that is happening. So that was, that era is only gone. I mean, that day I met someone and he said, don't write 10 episodes, Baba, write 8 episodes. <laughs> Nobody is going to pay for 10 episodes. So, so rationalization is happening everywhere. So this glorious era of, oh, you know, the sky is a bit, which is also gone. They all want to make money. Okay. Now they all want subscribers. India is such a huge market. People get really greedy for those numbers, and those numbers will only come when costs go down. So eventually, and when content is good. Yes, yes. And but I know, you know, you know how Indians are. We want uh, content, but we want it in a bucket and a discount. So that's what it looks like to them. Yeah. You know that joke, na? Right? Woman went shopping, and she said, "Maya, ye ghee le na. She got the ghee. It was even forty percent fat free." She kept waiting. She said, "Payment." He's saying, "Oh, forty percent fat joke, nee hai. Wo to saath mein do." Yeah. Didi, you know, she was mentioning about cutting costs, etc. As a woman actor, do you face this? Or you, you know, you 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 see this happening sometimes that the male co-star is being paid far more, but usse bargaining kam ho rahi hai, and female actresses se bargaining zyada ho rahi hai. Isse dekha? Uh, I was holding my mother's 